Hey guys, welcome back to our Elm Rust Dual Project API series. My name is Tensor. Today we're going to start looking at how we can build out a front end in the Elm programming language for our Rust API. To get started, we want to create an app directory. Inside of this, we want to create another directory called Elm and another directory called JS. Our Elm directory will have all of our Elm project files inside of it. And our JS directory will have a small JavaScript file that we will use to link to the HTML that we are serving over our Rust API. Let's build that piece first. So first we want to create an app.js file inside of our JavaScript folder. And inside of this file, we want to import from Elm main. So in our Elm folder, we're going to have a module called main, and that's what we're doing here. We're importing the actual Elm code into our JavaScript. Then we want to use document.querySelector to get our Elm container, which we're going to add to our public index.html file. And we're going to have an if block. If we have an Elm div, then we want to take our Elm and embed it in our Elm div. Inside of our index.html, we want to replace it with a div with an ID of Elm container. That way we can actually grab this div with our query selector from the app js and we also want to reference a script that will be in our javascript folder inside of this public folder so the basic concept is that we will be able to embed our elm application into this piece of html and then serve it on our rust server we want to open up our command line inside of our app folder and run the npm init command to generate our package.json file i'll call our package name api and i'll leave all this other stuff as default for now this this will generate a basic package.json file. Now I'm going to use the package manager called yarn to add these dependencies to our dev dependencies in our package.json. So I'm going to get auto reload brunch, babel brunch, brunch, clean CSS brunch, CSS brunch, elm, Elm branch, node Elm compiler, and uglify JS branch. So the reason why I'm using yarn instead of npm in this case is because it's simply faster. Okay, so now I have all the dependencies. If you want to do the same thing with npm, you use npm install dash dash save dash dev. So this is equivalent to doing yarn add dash dash dev. Okay, so now that we have branch, we want to build a branch configuration file. And this file will be called branch dash config.js. Branch is what is going to allow us to compile our Elm and our JavaScript modules and then package them all into one file, which we can then reference with our HTML. First, we want to export the config module. We'll set up our files field. This will have our JavaScripts. So we're going to join JS app JS. And then for our style sheets, we want to join to CSS app.css. And this is just in case we had any style sheets. Now this application will not have any style sheets outside of the Elm styling. So you could remove this block if you wanted to. Then we want to add in our conventions and our assets. And this will be for any static files. We want to get them out of a static folder. And then we have our paths. We want to point to where we want to watch our paths. Specifically though, we want to watch our JavaScript folder and our Elm folder. So these are the two that you really want to focus on, the JS and the Elm. And then our other path, our output path, will be in dot dot backslash public, which is this folder here. Now this is the most important part of this file. So we set up our plugins. We want to set up Babel. And then we want to set up Elm branch. So we put in our Elm folder, which is just called Elm. Our main module will be called main.elm. And then we want to put in the output folder, which is dot dot js. We also want to make sure that we auto require our js backslash app.js. And this configuration is all that we really need to do to compile our JavaScript in our Elm and then package it into a JS file inside of our public JS and then serve it with our HTML. Inside of our package.json file, we want our main file to be this brunch dash config.js file and then we want to add three different scripts into our scripts area so we have a start script this will run branch build, then it will run cd dot dot, and then it will run cargo run. This will compile our Elm and our JavaScript, and then it will go into the folder where our Rust project resides and run cargo to launch the server. All right, so now that we have all of that finished, we want to actually go into our app Elm folder, and we want to install a few Elm packages to get our Elm modules set up. Specifically, we want to get the core libraries, and we want to install elm lang backslash http. This will come back 
back and say, I would like to add the following dependency and we want to hit Y, which is yes. And then it will also tell us that it's installing core, HTML, HTTP, and virtual DOM. And we want to hit yes for that as well. And then it will download all of it and put it into our, our Elm package.json. And now we can create our main.elm file. We want to start this out by exposing the main module. And then we want to import HTML, HTML attributes, HTML events, HTTP, JSON decode as JSON and JSON encode as encode. The HTML package will allow us to create HTML elements as well as access the entry point function. Our HTML attributes will allow us to add attributes to our HTML. HTML events will allow us to manipulate the events on our HTML elements. Our HTTP library will allow us to make different HTTP requests like get, post, delete, etc. And then our JSON libraries will help us encode and decode our JSON respectively. We want to first set up a type alias for our book type. This will have our title, which will be a string, our author, which will also be a string, and our published, which will be a boolean. Then we want to set up our model. For now, we're just going to have a books field, which will have a list of books. We just want this books field so that we'll be able to get our books from our JSON and then put them inside of our model. Then we want to create an initialization function. We're just going to set up our model with an empty list and then we're going to pass back command none. For our message union type, we want to have two types right now. The first one is a get books type, which has a result, a HTTP error, and a list of book type. And then we have a request books type. This will be the message that we use to connect our button to our get request and then the get books type will be the message that we use to actually fire off that get request. Next we want to write our update function. This will take in a message and a model and I'll put a model and command message and then it will run case message of so a pattern matching on message and for our get books message we'll have two different cases. One where we get back an OK and we get back JSON and the other one where we get back an error and an error. And then our request books message will have one single case. For our first get books case, we just want to set the field inside of our models called books equal to our JSON. Then for our error case, we just want to call debug.log and then to string on the error itself. And we want to pass back our model and command none. Our request books message will just pass back the model as it is. And and then it will run a function called get books, which will be a command type. And here's our get books function. We have get books, which is a command message. And this function just takes a let binding and it binds our URL, which is localhost 8000 API version one books. And then the request that we want, which is http.get URL. And then another function called decode books, which will allow us to decode our JSON. And then we put this into an http.send with get books the get books message here and then our request. Our decode books function is fairly basic. This just returns a json.decoder with list of book inside of it and we decode our books by calling json et and if you remember what our json looks like we have a result and then we have a big list of our books after it. So we want to read the json after that result. We call json.list on book decoder which is another function. Our book decoder function will just return a JSON decoder of type book and we'll just call JSON map three. So we want to map three different fields inside of our JSON into our book type and we call JSON at on title, author, and published. And then we specify the types that we want back. For title, we're getting a string. So we want a string. For author, we're also getting a string. And then for published, we're getting a Boolean. So we want a Boolean. All right, so this is all the logic that we actually need to just create a simple get request and then decode our JSON. Now we just need to create a view so that we can see the JSON that we've decoded and order it inside of our HTML file. Our view will take in our model and it will output an HTML message. Our basic view skeleton Tim will be a div with a div inside of it in which we map a book view function with our model books inside of it. And then we'll have a button which on click will call our request books message. And this button will just have text that says get books. Our book view function will just take in a book and it will output HTML and a message. And then our book view will just be an unordered list with a bunch of list items inside of it. And each list item will have one of the fields of our book. So the first one will have book.title. 
The second one will have book.author. And then the third one will take our book.published, we'll pipe it into the toString function, and then we'll pipe it into our text function. And this is because book.published is a Boolean and not a string. To actually finish off this application, we just need to set up our subscriptions function. This will just take in our model and output a subscription message. And because we have no subscriptions in this application, we're just going to pass back sub.none. And then our main function will call html.program We'll put in init for init, update for update, view for view, and subscriptions for subscriptions. If we go back into our projects Rust API app folder, we can now run npm start. And this should compile our Elm application and then go into our Rust application and run the server. You can see here that it compiled our Elm to JS backslash main.js, and then it compiled 66 files and put them into app.js, and then it launched Rocket on localhost 8000. And just for a second, if we go into our public JS folder, you can see here that now we have this app.js file and it's fairly large because it has all of our Elm as well as all of the modules that we downloaded compiled inside of it. If we go to localhost 8000 inside of a browser, we have this button now that says get books. If we click it, it will open up a list with our two books inside of it. So we have our Pale Fire book and then we have Gravity's Rainbow and both of these are being pulled from our API. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we'll actually add our post request, we'll add our delete request, and we'll add our update request to our Elm application. If you enjoyed this tutorial, feel free to subscribe and like. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the box below. And if you dislike this video, then by all means, download it as much as you like. Have a good night.